Well, good morning. Today is actually Monday, Memorial Day. It's pretty early in the morning. And this here is an interesting vehicle. It's, um, it's not just the 2019 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross SEL with all-wheel drive. It's the last CVT vehicle I'm going to drive done with CVT. Um, <sighs> where do I begin? Oh yes, I'll begin with one thing. I'm Brian with New Car Spin. I'm an automotive journalist accredited with two press associations. When vehicle manufacturers give us vehicles, they don't pay us to do reviews. They cross their fingers, which I think this is why is this is called the Eclipse Cross, and they hope that they get a decent review. We don't get paid for this, so what I do is I cut through all the BS and I give you the straight deal on what this is. I drove it for a week for you, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. Um, first off, this car isn't for who you think it's for. This car is for Jack, and not just any Jack. This car is for Jack from Nightmare Before Christmas. You see. Manufacturers build vehicles and then they put them on the market, but they have engineering and marketing and all these different branches within the company that throw ideas on the wall to see what sticks. And then the bean counters come along and the bean counters go, oh, is that gluten-free pasta? No, 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 no. We can't use that. That's too expensive. And by the time everyone's done, and whatever pasta's left on the wall still sticks, they build a vehicle. Now, part of that problem is, when that vehicle was built, it has to be certified. It has to go through regulations and things in different countries, and then it has to be imported. Someone's got to build it. All these parts have to come together. And what you end up with is the latest new vehicle. However... Um, Jack, uh, you're going to want a car soon and you're going to be curious. And, um, all I can say is don't do it. The reason for that is because Mitsubishi, who makes this vehicle, didn't ask you what you want. They asked you what you want and your mom told them what you're going to have and so what she said was it's going to be safe which means it's going to be slow and it's going to have all-wheel drive and it's going to be economical which means it's going to have a 1.5 liter engine can they go any smaller no they can't it's going to have a cvt because it's fuel efficient and it's got to be rugged so they give it, uh, well, they give it a roof rack. You see? You get these optional cross members here where you can put stuff on the roof, like a bike rack or a space case. And then you could do things like go camping with your uh, friends, right? They could fit in the back. And, of course, you know, heated seats. And there's a uh, plug here to throw in a, uh, an adapter to charge your phones with USB. But then it's weird. It's like, do I bring three friends or two friends in the back? Because look at this seat belt for the middle. It comes out of the C-pillar, and then it goes into this little thing, okay? And then it, and then it slides through there. So it's like, safe? Maybe? I've never really seen that in a car at this price range. And uh, huh. let's pull out the window sticker, shall we? You see, the problem here, Jack, is they checked off all the boxes that your mom wanted checked off. And um, they don't really care about the ultimate thing. Oh, geez, where is that window sticker? Uh, let's see. Insurance, you're going to need that. Here it is. Ready? Even with a CVT and a 1.5 liter engine, this is only averaging 26 on the highway. 
what how is that fuel efficient how is that economical any car any car can do that but a car with a cvt and a 1.5 you it's got to do much better than that but it doesn't and so we go down the list here and we go okay well how much does it cost <laughs> Well, let me, let me uh, before I get to the full price, let me show you one of the accessories. Um, this does have the touring package. It does have an optional pearl white paint for 300 bucks, uh, actually 295 to be specific. And it has this thing, you know, got floor mats and the roof rack, those cross members, $345. But then accessory black lug nuts and wheel locks, $225. That is the most expensive option for wheel nuts I've ever seen. Um, $225 for nuts. That That is nuts. Uh, here's the best one though. The accessory tono, tono, tunu, tono cover. That's the thing that goes over the uh, trunk part in the back. I'll just call it a theft partition. To open the trunk though, actually, there is no there's no button. I can't find a button to open the trunk, so you have to go outside to do it. It's right here. And it's not powered. Okay, keep that in mind. And yes, it does have a Rockford Fosgate stereo, so there's a subwoofer back here. Yeah, you'll be impressed by that, maybe. Um, here, though, this thing. Look at this thing. Look at how it sags. This fabric here is, is looking like it's off of a 10-year-old Honda Civic. And then it slides out like this and then goes like that. But it just, it, that's brand new. That cover is $190. This, this thing right here is $190. Okay. Now, to me, that's not acceptable. And neither is a non-powered trunk lid. And why, why would I say this? Let's get back in here. The reason why I'd say that, Jack, is because they called this the Eclipse Cross. And that's because your mom wanted you to think you had something really cool. When I was 16, the Mitsubishi Eclipse and also the Eagle Talon, which were the same car, were there. They were out and then they, they updated the Eclipse and then they updated it again and then they updated it and then they killed it off. But now apparently it's back. Uh, the Eclipse had all wheel drive and the Eclipse had things like a manual transmission available, but the Eclipse never had this. They never had my mom tell them I wanted something safe. And then they, they took a cool coupe with all wheel drive and they made it a CUV to make it seem like it was gonna be safe. And then they never gave it a smaller engine and a CVT. And then they never gave me a sticker price of $33,305. Now, yes, this is made in Japan. So it is Japanese, 100%. Um, however, so is the Mazda CX-5. And to be quite honest, Jack, uh, I did say that the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport, which has a two liter engine and a manual handbrake, so it's even better at uh, stunts. I did say that that car was perfect for your sister, but now I'm not even sure what this is for because um, this this thing makes no sense. It, it, and I'm not even gonna, uh, well, let's see. We have heated seats, right? We don't have gps but we do have a pretty cool heads-up display let me go that see it rises up and then shows mitsubishi motors there we are i can see it barely there we go so yeah it has some stuff that you probably be entertained by but there's no navigation now <clears throat> the uh the Outlander Sport was under 30 grand. The Mazda CX-5 loaded was 37 plus a few options. So it ended up being like 39, but it had Napa leather. It had 
a Bose stereo and navigation. It had radar cruise. It had all these things that you don't get in this car. And my problem with this is 33 grand for this, or you can get um, a Mazda CX-5 for a couple grand more. And this is, this is my thing here. For a couple grand, if you were to finance that, and obviously your parents are going to have to finance, um, you're talking three to four grand over five or six years, which ends up being like $18 a week. And I'm sure you could work an extra two hours at your minimum wage job to cover that extra cost. And so what I'd have to say is I cannot recommend this car at all. And as much as I like the Mitsubishis and I like the Eclipse, uh, the old ones, and I think it's really cool to have an Evo style uh, all wheel drive system in here. I just don't believe this is the car for you. And um, really Jack, that's unfortunate. Let me show you all what else I got in here. So we, I have that piece of uh, napkin down there so you can see how deep this is. But you can fit things in there. And there's no lock on the glove box. The only cool thing in the car is this. Okay, this here is like the, the uh, manual book. See, there's manuals in there. But it's also a first aid kit. So they've incorporated it all into the dash uh, through the glove box. And of course you have a pen and a tire pressure gauge. So that's kind of cool. I wish all the manufacturers did this because it's a large glove box. It's very organized and it's, it's, where it, it's where it needs to be and it's everything you need in one spot. That's really the only good thing about this car I can tell you about. <clears throat> really though, you know, I'm trying to cut through this. Let's just say we took away the Eclipse cross name and we just call this thing the shell, the Mitsubishi shell. Um, and then we take a walk around it again and you tell me, would you ever buy this vehicle? Let me know in the comments below, Jack, because um, I think I'm right here. Um, I think actually, if they didn't call it the shell, you know what they should call it? They should call it the cheese burger. <clears throat> Let's see. Got the key in my pocket. See, it just, it has this facade, this like vain look to it. Uh, something narcissists would probably like. I don't know. I couldn't trust anyone who, who would drive this vehicle. Of course, unless it's a rental vehicle. The only thing they tried to carry over from the previous Eclipse was this bulb on the back end. And then they kind of gave it like this Volvo XC60 slash XC40 look right in there. And that's okay. But what is all this? I'm not a fan of those two color wheels either. And I'm definitely not a fan of this front end. And yes, I might sound cranky, and it is early in the morning. But look at the build quality. Look at this. This is a $33,000 car. And this is the kind of workmanship you're going to get in your vehicle. That is that acceptable to you? Is that is that what you wanted? Yeah, we've got cup holders. Yeah, there's USB in here. And there's some kind of eco mode and there's a heated steering wheel. But really there's nothing else left to talk about because it doesn't do anything that well. Now the um the one I said that was good for your sister, and uh, you're going to like it, is um, the Outlander Sport. And it was just like so basic and so cool because you could just throw it around and do whatever and you don't even have to care. A car at this price range though, there, there has to be a lot more you have to demand from it. It has, it has to be very satisfying. And this, this is like, I've been doing a lot of mattress shopping lately and... Uh, I hate my mattress. I get up in the morning, as you can tell, and I'm very cranky. 
and I'm very sore and I just, I had a terrible night's sleep. And so you go into the mattress shop anywhere at any store and they go, oh, well, you should get the most expensive one you can afford because you're going to have it for 20 years. Uh, yeah, if it's that expensive, you're going to have to keep it for 20 years to pay for it and to keep affording it because it's, it's overpriced and it's, and it's um, not worth it. So my new philosophy has been buy the cheapest mattress, the cheapest one, and then just sleep on it for six to 12 months. And then if you don't like it, throw it out and get another one. That is the Outlander Sport to me. That is something where I can just totally destroy it and not care and then get another one and still have fun. It's like, it's like a mattress. And so if you get too, too involved with your mattress, you end up with this. Um, you know, fiddly, fiddly controls. I, I've, I haven't even touched this. This is like the stupidest thing on the face of the planet. This is worse than the Lexus system, but it's here to make it seem like it's an upscale vehicle and it's not. Okay. Take away that Eclipse name and get away from that fanboy aspect to it. <clears throat> and you have, you have, um, just... Look at that sagging. You have a vehicle that has, I don't know, just doesn't, it just doesn't add up. Doesn't add up. Nothing here makes any sense. So I'm not gonna drive it. And this is um, the best I can explain for people who might wanna be new drivers or people who don't know much about vehicles and let other people make choices for them. Uh, speaking of which, this is the weirdest texture I've ever felt. It looks like leather, but it feels rubbery. It's, it's a lot like, ah, uh, it's weird. It's different. I'll tell you that, but that's actually the nicest texture in this car. Um, someone with, with that ASMR thing, would probably like that piece. Anyway, this is the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross for some reason, they called it an Eclipse. It has a CVT, a 1.5 liter engine. It's pretty dismal, pretty slow. And yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> or you're welcome. So please be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Um, it's, it's nowhere near what an eclipse used to be. So the name is a, a definite distraction. Um, if we just called it the Mitsubishi cheeseburger, I think you'd say, wow, that's one expensive cheeseburger. And you'd be right. Thanks for watching. See you later.